much more able to present uh, what I wanted to present. Uh, although I'm not sure I can address this question properly. Rudy asked me to make a presentation why soul care. I think this question should be answered by uh, the European Commission because they have uh, uh, written the call for proposal. But I can uh, indicate at least a little bit the, back, the background. Uh, well, the objectives, I think Rudy has explained it already, so I don't have to repeat that. Well, if you think, why soil care? I think the, 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 the first thing that comes to my mind is that it should address, soil care should address soil degradation, should minimize soil degradation. Soil threats due to changes in agriculture, urbanization, that affect crop productivity. And there are a whole range of possible soil threats where you can think about it, which could, where, 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 so, where uh, soil care could have a very beneficial influence. Another thing is also that you could think that soil care is needed because there is no integrated soil policy in the European Union. And perhaps, because there is quite a bit of emphasis in soil care on implementation of soil improving cropping systems in practice. So you could think that soil care should contribute to, let's say, voluntary actions, because there is no regulatory approach within the European Commission. Coming back to soil degradation, addressing soil degradation. You will have seen such maps. It's really frightening if you see these maps. It looks like more or less that whole Europe is degraded. The dark red is very degraded. The yellow is degraded soil. So, according to this analysis, it's uh, sorry, a little bit old, but it it, uh, it 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 looks very very poor. So I think we also have to, if we look in, if we go, if we focus soil care on soil degradation or minimizing soil degradation, we need to define soil degradation as well properly, because I, I cannot imagine that whole Europe has degraded soils. Uh, the broader picture related to soil threats, there are, uh, you, you could put it in, in uh, UN, you could relate soil care in relation to the UN Convention on Biological Diversity, uh, and the Convention on Climate Change, there is a soil paragraph on the Convention on to Combat Desertification. It's very much focused on soil conservation. <coughs> Halting soil degradation is also a priority target in the previous millennium uh, goals, millennium development goals. And if you looked, if you read the book of Jeffrey Sachs. Halting soil degradation is one of the six top priorities of the UN. Uh, but then if you look to the Sustainable Development Goals, the recently approved soil uh, uh, Sustainability Development Goals in 2015, you don't find soil so well pronounced. There are, well, eight <coughs> Sustainable development goals are related to food production, and food production is, of course, very much related to sustainable soil management. On four places, soil is mentioned as a target, in target 2.4, which is related to no hunger, uh, abating hunger, 3.9, 12.4, 15.3, which is related to seed. Interestingly, soil is not listed as an indicator. There are about 150 indicators in the Sustainable Development Goals, 
and none of it mentioned soil. So apparently, uh, from a very prominent place in the Millennium Development Goals, it, had, it has disappeared a little bit. It doesn't come back in its U.S. Sustainable Development Goals. You could look at soil care also from another angle, not just from the angle of soil degradation, but you could think about that soil care can have a positive influence on environmental sustainability of agricultural systems and their ecosystem services. So not so much from the soil degradation influence, but more from the broader perspective <laughs> of, of sustainable um, agricultural production. Again, coming back to what I said before, that there is quite a bit of emphasis in soil care on the implementation in practice, you could also think that there are concerns about the progress of environmental policies in achieving targets. In the, US, in, in, in the EU, we have quite a bit of agri-environmental policies, and in general, you may say that the progress in, uh, in achieving targets is not so strong. So perhaps there is an opportunity over there. Uh, you could also think about the competitiveness of farmers. That's of course also an issue. We lose farmers. There is certain areas in Europe where uh, land is abundant. And if you look to, if you talk to uh, policymakers from DG Agri, they come up with more and more concerns about food security. The Common Agriculture Policy was started more than 60 years ago with food security as an issue. It has completely disappeared. It was, we had food surpluses, but it comes back. It comes back slowly again. So food, food security is perhaps an issue where our project may have an influence. Yes, a little bit about this broader background. I think you all know that this, this food security issue is related to the fact that uh, the rate at which the human population is doubling speeds up tremendously. And from uh, here, we, it took about uh, 50 years to grow 1 billion, and now it, it takes only 15 years to get 1 billion people in addition. And they all need to have food. There's also the issue of, uh, let's say, planetary or ecosystem soundness and the, the planetary boundaries, a safe operating space for humanity. And also here, soil cares has an influence because there are three aspects where, let's see, the human influence on the planet has exceeded what nature can absorb. And that is related to uh, biodiversity here, so it's in the red zone, and it's related to nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, eutrophication. So the level of, of eutrophication is at such a level that it uh, threatens the, uh, the earth, the sustainability of our earth system. Yeah, looking now again, uh, Rie also asked me to talk a little bit about the drivers in agriculture and how that uh, links to our work. Well, the drivers in agriculture are basically farmers respond to markets. It's market, uh, farmers, if, if you talk to farmers, they, they talk to each other as colleagues. But basically, they are competitors. They are competing with each other and they, because they need uh, to get rid of the products on the market. And so changes in market 
a folks changes in agriculture system and the, the big drivers are changes in demography and prosperity of people that change the diets and the demand for food economics of specialization intensification and upscaling i come back to that because that is a main factor also for having influence on, on, on soil quality. And then location specific cost advantages. Sp specific systems tend to agglomerate near each other because they can learn from each other. They benefit from each other through a change of information. They, they have more easy access to markets. Of course, then our, our next to markets, we have the technological developments, it's the science, where we contribute as well. New breeds, new machines, and we have the governmental policies. Common agriculture policy, environmental regulations. Another thing, it is a little bit more related to, uh, to the market, the changing in markets. This is from uh, Joachim from Brown, from the University of Bonn, and he was formerly at IFPRI the Institute of Food and Policy Research Institute in Washington. It's amazing if you look how this, the picture has changed in a globalizing world. We have 7 billion consumers. We have a retail sector, which is, and we buy our food at supermarkets. The 10 biggest supermarkets, they have a and then we have a, 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 a what is omzet in the English? Turnover. Turnover. They have a turnover of 1,100 billion US dollar. That's an amount we can only dream about. It's amazing. And then we have the processing industry. <laughs> Top 10 has a turnover of 400 billion US. And then the producers, that is the farmers. We work for the farmers, and probably most of it. We have 450 billion million farms. And the turnover of all the farm produce is only 1,300 billion euro. So the, in, in increasingly, the power is in the retail sector. They dominate the prices that the consumers pay and that the producers receive. And that's also for the processing industry in between as well. So they increasingly determine also what the producers should produce. It's not only the farmers. Uh, well, this is complicated. I skip this. <laughs> Coming back to the drivers, the drivers that we will examine as well in soil care, because they affect soil quality. It's specialization. You all know, if you want to be the best, you have to specialize. If you want to be good in sport, you need to to focus on only cycling and not swimming at the same time. Because you, you will never be a champion. So you need to specialize. And that's the same what farmers are doing. And specialization is here, this, it refers to a narrowing of cropping systems. And that happens. Yeah. Secondly, is intensification. Again, comparing it with sport, it's again clear. If you don't intensify your training program, you'll never become a champion. Yeah, so intensification, getting more out of your body, getting more out of the land, getting more per unit of labor. Mechanization, if possible, try to use a small battery in your bicycle, because that is much more easy to, to stay in the group. Upscaling, I come back to that. Farmers have to scale up their farm, otherwise they will be outcompeted. 
and the other one is concentration. It is more or less the opposite. So these ones are so I, I would say contribute. These, these driving forces contribute to soil threats, and concentration is just the opposite. It helps to conserve it. So yeah, and how does it work? Well, if you look to and driving forces and farming systems of cropping systems. You have here the driving forces that leads to changes within the farm in management, breeds, and so on. That leads to technical, technological progress on the farm, in the field, in your cropping systems. Increased yield, increased yield per laborer, changes in emission, developments of productivity that leads to changes in farm structure and changes in price ratio. And that, again, this is the internal driver. There is also an internal driver within the cropping system. So you have external driving forces that fuel changes, but there are also internal changes through changes in farm structure and changes in the price ratios. Of course, there are also natural driving forces. We have learned, most of you have learned that. Uh, this map just reminds me that Europe is not everywhere as in the Netherlands. <laughs> uh, fortunately, I would say, this is a map of environmental stratification. This is a map made some 10 years ago. It's based on climate parameters. Uh, geomorphology parameters, soil parameters, and it shows the diff diversity of environmental zones. So the, 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 the environment in which the cropping systems uh, operate. You can combine this kind of environmental stratification with, uh, with your modeling. So if, if you would, for example, uh, put a map on potential yields, you will find that the potential, this is where the potential yields are highest. Here it's low because of drought in summer. In Scandinavian it's simply too cold. And in Eastern Europe it's also too cold or to try. You can also combine it with maps on geomorphically, you can make maps showing the potential for night losses, but you can also make uh, maps for erosion losses. Yeah? The, the vulnerability for erosion. So it means that there is a huge diversity in Europe as regards to the vulnerability to soil threats and soil degradation. Yeah, a few words on crop production. Uh, this is a picture also almost 20 years old. This is a little bit about uh, that, that in crop production, in crop production, you have more or less three situations. You have the potential, the yield potential. It's defined by the genetic the genetics of your crop, the crop variety, and the climate. Then you have this water and nutrient limited production. Crops need water and nutrient. Uh, and all over the world you may say that crop yields currently are strongly, on, it, on average, water and nutrient limited. Perhaps with the exception of Ireland, they have enough water. And the Netherlands, we have water and a lot, lot of manure as well. And then you have the actual crop yield, which is reduced. It's reducing factors because then you get also weeds, pest, uh, diseases, and pollutants. So this is a little bit. It helps you to understand difference in yield uh, and and also how management can affect. If we then look 
to soil. What is the influence of soil? Oh yeah, this is interesting. I forgot to tell. In this original paper made by a crop ecologist, the word soil is hardly used. Because soil in itself is not seen as a crop limiting, crop reducing or defining factor. It is the nutrients and the water that is limiting. Plants don't eat soil. <coughs> Yet, soil is an important factor for crop production. And that is related to delivering capacity, to deliver water to the crops. So the rooting depth is important. And the soil water holding capacity. The nutrient delivering capacity is important. Soil borne pest and diseases. Soil borne weeds. Workability. Uh, if, if the farmers cannot enter the field early in the season, they lose growing days. Yields will be less. Or the work, the, 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 the seed bed is not fine enough, and then the germination is not good enough. You can have also uh, uh, reducing factors like pollutants, salt affected soils, or metals that limit production and especially the quality. Oh, yeah. I don't know how many of you have heard about law of the, the optimum. Probably most of you have learned about uh, yeah, this from Liebschner. Not from Liebig. Many of you have heard about Liebig. But Liebschner, I think, is much more important. Also more than 100 years ago. Uh, he said, a production factor which is in the minimum supply contributes more to production the closer all other factors are to the optimum. So it doesn't, in, in, in Liebig focused on the minimum factor. But you must not focus on the minimum factor alone, you must factor on all factors. Because it doesn't have any, it doesn't make any difference if you focus on the limiting factor as soon as you find that other factors become limiting. So you must look at all the limiting Factors. And that is basically what the law of Lipschner is saying. So you must, and this emphasizes the importance of management, everything needs to be in a proper order, in a proper time, in a proper place, in the proper method. Five minutes, huh? Okay. This is too complicated. <laughs> Five minutes. Uh, the red race. Yeah, this, I want, this, this is from two agronomists, Massoyer and Rudar. They have written a nice book about the history of agriculture. And this, it shows what happens with, farm, with farming systems and cropping systems. If you, they have plotted here the output per worker. And here they have put the area that the worker can operate by itself. And these circles are different farming systems, are the different countries in the world. So here you have many small farms in Africa, in China, and in the globalizing world they have to compete with the big farmers in the US. Yes? And these big farmers, they, they, what they do, they, they, because they know the law of the optimum, they improve and they, they, law the, they know the technology, so their output increases. This goes up in this way. But at the same time, because they produce more, and so far production has always been ahead of uh, demand, there is a fall in price in prices of agricultural produce, and so these balls fall to this level in terms of 
currencies. Yeah? And at the same time, there is a rise in the cost of living because farmers also want to have a television, want to go on holidays and so on. The net effect is that here farmers are squeezed out, drop out. So the red race means there is a continuous pressure among the farmers community to increase production, to increase the productivity and to increase the area of the land. Otherwise, they have the other, the other thing, what they can do is change crops. <coughs> so if, if you are not clever as a, as a producer, you produce biofuels, very low value, or fibers, forage. The best one is wheat. In my country, there are many uh, people that know how much money you can earn by growing marijuana in your garage. <laughs> it's just the value. And that is what, there is a, there is a pressure. Because the, the output, the value of these small crops is tremendously high. And it's the same for flagrants and parkings. So small farmers need to to focus on high value crops, root crops, flowers. Ooh, not so too complicated. Uh, policy drives. <coughs> Many policies. <laughs> yes. Summary and pro propositions. Uh, yeah, so the, the need for soil care as a product as we sit here is I think emanates from soil threats. Soil threats that contribute to soil degradation. And also probably because of a lack of an integral soil policy within the European Commission. So they want to achieve uh, soil conservation not through policy but maybe through smart way of implementing uh, voluntary measures like soil improving crop systems. It could be that soil care, there is a need for soil care perhaps also related to concerns about environmental sustainability in general in cropping systems, the slow progress of environmental policy implementation, the competitive of the EU farmers, the future food security. I have, I hope I have shown that there are ongoing driving forces and eh, that change cropping systems, but that also change soil policy. Yes, soil improving cropping systems, in my view, this, this is my proposition. Soil improving cropping systems seem most appropriate to address subtle forms of <coughs> soil degradation, erosion, compaction, loss of <coughs> soil organic matter, biodiversity, salinization. So it's not a big threat, <coughs> subtle forms, where you still have an influence through cropping systems. Crop yields, resource use, efficiency, and environmental performance can be increased simultaneously through proper soil improving cropping systems. That is the general <coughs> hypothesis of this project. Thank you. Just within yes. the limit. Yes. Yes.